Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Well, recently I kind of had the hankering to possibly make some homemade spaghetti out on the backpacking trail. So I stopped by the Walmart store and went over to the dried food area and some of the other areas that you find canned foods and tomato paste and things like that. So I kind of gathered up some things that I thought might work and I uh, bought some hamburger helper and some chili fixings and various things that might work and I decided that I needed to dehydrate some hamburger so I headed over to the meat department. Of course if you've ever priced hamburger lately you know it's uh, a fortune but I decided I'd go ahead and get the best hamburger that I could so I went and got the 93.7 which has 7% fat, and I felt like that would be the best to have uh, for dehydration purposes. So I bought the three pound pack and brought it on home. So as usual, I came home and got on the internet and looked up how to dehydrate ground beef. And I came up with a number of websites and they pretty much all said the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and post the URL for one of those websites right here. And you'll see that right below this photograph. Of course, I had placed the meat in the freezer after I got back from Walmart. So I had to thaw it out tonight. The microwave originally called for 29 minutes to do 3 pounds. But it turned out that it was not quite long enough. I had to run it for another 13 or 14 minutes to really get it to defrost. After that, it was fine. Of course, be prepared. It will mess up your microwave and you'll have to clean it up. But that's the way it goes. Now it was time to set up my electric eye. Put the largest pot that I had on, which is a large stainless steel pot with a copper bottom on the bottom of it and I placed the hamburger all three pounds in there kind of spread it out and you want to make sure that you chop up your hamburger in as small pieces as you possibly can. Next I turned the electric eye on high and made sure that I was there stirring the meat chopping it up and turning it over as needed. Cooking up the hamburger took about 45 minutes Usually if I cook up about a pound for some homemade spaghetti, I can usually uh, cook that up in 15 minutes. But three pounds took a little bit more time. But you've also got plenty of time to do your cleanup. So I took advantage of that and then turned around after a few minutes and stirred the pot, so to speak, to make sure it wasn't going to be burning. The last 15 minutes or so of the cooking process, the meat had already turned brown and had cooked pretty well, but I put the top on the pot just to make sure, and it built up quite a bit of steam in there for the last 15 minutes, and I opened it a couple of times to stir it. So that top made sure that uh, the steam would cook any portion that might still be a little bit red, and it worked out real well. Now the next process is to drain off as much, if not all, of the oil and grease that you can. And you've got to kind of be careful, otherwise you'll dump the meat into your pot that you're trying to pour the oil into. You may have to end up using a spoon or something to get the grease out, but one way or the other you want to get as much of this grease out as possible. Now once you've drained all the grease out, your next step is to line a colander with cheesecloth and pour boiling hot water over the meat to get out all the last bit of oil and grease that might be in the, in the meat. Now I did that using some coffee mugs and I probably used six or eight mugfuls for each of the half portion of the meat. And I thought at first this might be a silly idea until I saw the water that had came out. And lo and behold, there's an awful lot of grease and oil left in the meat even after you've 
fry it off and pour it off. So I learned a lesson right there. At this point in time, I had divided the meat up into two separate bowls. And I went ahead and popped those into the convection oven at about 225 degrees on bake. And that was basically to dry out all the moisture that was in the meat before I placed them in the dehydrator. I guess I left the meat in the convection oven for maybe about an hour and I could tell that it was dry because I would put a fork in and stir the meat to make sure that the moisture was uh, coming out properly and make sure the meat was being stirred up and when I was able to take the fork out and it not being wet that was my signal it was time to go ahead and get ready to put it in the de into the dehydrator. Now I got my dehydrator all set and I only needed two trays. Each tray would be holding about one and a half pounds of hamburger and I had the small parchment type uh, screens in place so the meat would not fall through to the bottom of the uh, dehydrator. Then I went ahead and put the top of the dehydrator on. It's a Nesco professional model. It's got various temperature settings and it has the fan in the top portion so I placed that on and I set the setting to 160 degrees and that is the setting for meat and the instructions on the website stated that you would leave it for 8 to 12 hours depending upon uh, the moisture content of the meat or the humidity of your home or whatever so I'm going to probably leave it in about 12 hours so I'll make sure that it's good and dehydrated so at this point in time we'll pause and see you back in about 12 hours well the ground beef has been dehydrating for about 12 hours now and as you can see it turned out very well it actually reminds me of the consistency of instant coffee and it definitely is dry I did sample a small piece and it is dry as a bone and it's dry to the touch and it's ready to be packaged up I've gone ahead and sterilized a couple of pint sized mason jars and the lids and about ready to go ahead and put this away I let the jars dry out pretty well and then I put the hamburger inside I left about an inch and a half two inches at the top and later today I'll try to get go to the store and pick up a couple of oxygen absorbers and place one in each one of them
Well, that wraps it up for this video on dehydrating ground beef. I appreciate you stopping by and keep your eye out. I may be out on the trail actually using this dehydrated ground beef in some kind of a recipe. So thanks for stopping by and as always, take care.